forget about sustainability, you want to enrich ecosystems. Every being is equipped to live a positive, energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. Howdy guys, welcome back to another Agroforestry Academy video. Today we're going to be looking at this plot that was originally planted in July 2016. So we're almost four years down the line. There's been a lot of pruning, a lot of change in shape throughout that time. Uh, but today is a key moment where we're preparing to go into the drought. Okay, it's the end of the rain season, so we've got a lot of that biomass created. Uh, a lot of work around the farm, so we haven't been able to dedicate you know, uh, bi-monthly uh, pruning of the, the system during the rainy season, which would have been ideal. Uh, but we definitely need to do this as we go into the drought. So we make sure that, you know, all this organic material is well managed in, in its best place to aid the system throughout the drought. Okay, so basically that's at the ground. We really need to create that ground coverage really to try to keep that moist in the ground for as long as possible. And uh, with that last humidity, get those re-sprouts of the branches that we're gonna prune, okay? So this system here, uh, basically lines of coffee, lines of trees at about five and a half meters from each other with originally triple rows of veg in the center. Okay, so we've got those coffees in the borders. Uh, we've got the bananas and some other trees going on there, macadamia nuts, some avocado by seeds, uh, some citrus, what else? We've got little canna, little cannas and <clears throat> you know guavas and other 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 things popping up there. So what did we do in this system? We had the veg here in the central rows. We kept the radical pruning and for about three years we were planting veg here. Last year we chose to let it be, you know let those avocados take take their space and and uh you know some of the taller eucalyptus tree let them really produce that organic matter up there let them really boom so we're thinking we're introducing the guinea grass in the center also known as the mombasa grass we're introducing uh passion fruit on two lines of the three triple lines of veg so two of those we introduced passion fruit with the central one. We introduced bananas, papayas, and little cayennes, other than the grass on the ground, okay? So the interesting thing here is that we had a, a standard banana prata. I'm gonna figure out in English, but it's interesting, you know, for your vocabulary in Portuguese, banana prata, uh, in the tree beds originally, okay? But uh, the key thing is, <clears throat> We have several varieties of the banana prata. So some of the newer types, they're, they're shorter types. Uh, some of the government like, you know, inbreed or whatever, you know, they've, they've developed this type where it's a shorter type. So it's really nice, you know, harvesting that and people love it. But now that we like planting those in the initial stage of the forest, the shorter bananas. Now that the banana, now that the forest has developed and you know, we've got taller strata going on we're introducing the central line here of those triple veg beds taller bananas so now if you can see what i'm trying to say we're introducing taller bananas at the second stage of the forest okay at the placenta second placenta okay um so it's the same variety banana prata but they're taller they're the original versions original banana pratas they were much taller so the idea is the ones on the tree rows, the shorter ones, are there just for the production of the biomass, we're just for pruning, radical pruning those, and we try harvest and let, let this, these central ones go up and uh, take that uh, emergent layer and produce bananas a little bit taller up, just because of you know, respecting the, the natural stratification of the stage of the forest as it is now. Okay, so we're gonna be going ahead, we're gonna manage all the bananas on the borders, we're gonna bring them all down. Apart from the ones that have already got the fruit, you know, the fruit will maybe a month away, a few of them are about a month away. Other than that, we're gonna be radical on those, okay? These central bananas, we're gonna give them a nice 
manage we've got to thin them out and just leave the one mother that's the tall straight you know chosen mother there all right and we're really going to be radical with these eucalyptus we're going to bring down the eucalyptus big time okay uh so we, it's mainly eucalyptus and banana managing out here all right we're going to be going ahead and manuring the ground we're going to bring in some of the manure that we've generated in in-house manure all right so we've got some chickens in the house we, we've got some chicken bed in there we've got to bring that in uh because right now we need to bring in the light for this grass i respect that the mombasa also known as guinea grass they they thrive well in the shade but still it's right here right now it's 100 percent shade so really the plan here is bring in a nice bit of light for the mombasa to you know maximize and then give it a nice bit of manure because we're going into the drought and my horses uh you know i'm starting to get worried about this because we need to really manage these areas so that i do have grass uh in in the most critical time of year all right so let's have a look around let's have a walk around and see some of the stuff that's going on here all right so as you can see we've got the passion fruit it's been very patient this passion fruit we've planted it we've let it the shade you know cast over it it's okay because it's not bearing flowers it's not uh looking to fruit but it will do now it's kind of mature and ready it's coming up to a year uh it's mature and ready so that when we open the sunlight uh hopefully it will start booming some light we need a bit of irrigation here to give that stimulation um but we, we're confident that once we bring in the light these passion fruits will will produce it's really nice sweet passion fruit big large chunky yellow and sweet okay as you can see these central thinner bananas they're really tall there you see it goes up all the way up high okay so we're going to be thinning in this bunch out okay we had lots of uh papayas that were successfully planted but they were shaded out okay some of them had the power to you know some of them had the power to you know survive so that's really good a benefit and we should harvest some fruit out of this once we've thinned everything out okay so, so we've got some thin little cayennes really quite difficult for the little cayennes to sprout from seed we've planted a very high density we don't want that many of them anyway but uh so we've got the one or two that we need you know we've got like one over here there's another one over here there's another one over here so the idea is these are just uh, improvised for the passion fruit these weak bamboos they're about a 24 month bamboo uh, so let's say we've got another season with them just you know this drought season next rain season they will be looking to rot so as we're opening up here we're looking for those little cayennes to really now man up and uh so we're going to be guiding those passion fruits on these little cayennes you see they've got really nice structure nice open arm structure so we're really looking forward for those passion fruits you know to be on the little cayennes that's the main reason uh, let's see how these behave all these little papayas let's see how they behave after what we're doing here these these weaker ones here you see some of them have even able to produce even though clearly not so healthy but still very nice fruit very nice full of nutritious very very sweet very sweet i've been eating some of these so we've got a few papayas that we can be hopeful about okay so that's that's going to benefit uh soon we're coming into coffee season coffee harvest yeah yeah so soon we're going to be harvesting some of these coffees here say in about uh, 60 days max we like we like to harvest them nice and ripe maybe about 45 days and these are the bananas on the tree rows that really got to be bring down that organic matter but as you can see it's like fortunately but unfortunately unfortunately i won't bring them all down like i would like to bring the maximum sunlight but you know because fortunately there's lots of fruit being bed on these tree beds you know after you've you know this is like the fourth harvest of bananas on each of these bunch so really i've got no no expectations for them anymore but you know you know the soils is pretty good it's pretty crisp so things have kept on producing really nice so we've got quite a few banana bananas 
bananas bunch coming up so yeah check out this avocado from seed yeah so this is a uh, four years ago planted from seed it's looking really crisp from this batch of seeded avocados i've already got one or two bearing fruit which means that next year we're going to have a good 40 or 50 and here where we're at is one of the best uh, soils in brazil for avocados so we've been planting hell of a lot of those by seed and really planning to you know in the future have a big market on the avocado things like uh, avocado oil which is great tendency so this is macadamia nut okay this was planted as well in the same time it's systematically spaced here every nine meters the macadamia nuts really nice in our region as well let's have a look at some of the soil it's a little bit dry because already we're approaching the dry season so there is a lot of life in the soil it's not extremely dark or anything like that Superficially, in the first look, it looks like it's just ants, but there are lots of other interesting things going on. Yeah. So it's definitely alive, and we're gonna, you know, do what we do, keep on bringing in, bringing down the organic matter. So yeah, so let's follow up and see how this develops. Let's get to work. You're right there, guys. So you can see what's happening, how much light we were able to bring in here just by taking you know most of the bananas down and the eucalyptus it's a very simple job here just eucalyptus and bananas pruning and already it's got to give good pump to the system with all the organic matter we were able to accumulate on the soil you know the stimulation of the light coming in the stimulation of the re-sprouts of new banana shoots of eucalyptus uh, new leaves and branches so we're gonna you know maximize that photosynthesis there I really brought in a lot of light um, you know there's a lot of canopies or some of these trees which are gonna you know get a boost now go back thrive again uh, mainly macadamia nuts and uh, avocados here a few of the citrus a little bit lower down as well so we pruned those at the moment, I still got to prune these avocados. You know, I got to get the ladder, still go up and prune these avocados. But we've pruned some of these citruses. We pruned uh, some of the other service trees that were planted here, like uh, the leucayanas and some other things that were planted by from from the, in front of the birds. The birds have been some of the native trees around here. The birds have been laying their seeds around and about here. So some of them we've brought them down completely, and others we've just pruned them. We were basically focusing on really looking after this grass. You know, this grass, as funny as it may seem, you know, for the next few months, it's going to be very key for me because we're going into the drought and any grass that I can harvest indoors for the animals it means, you know, there's less, the less hay I might have to buy uh, when, when things get really dry around here. So we've focused what we had of the banana trunks around the grass okay we've not covered it like a so uniform you know in a system where it's you know protecting seedlings or anything like that we've really just gone after grass sprouts and we're really just you know layering the banana trunks next to the grass we're really looking after the grass the tree bed has received all the leafage from the eucalyptus so there's a lot of material there to look after the area for the whole drought season now um, you know I'll, you can bug me about it you know give us a comment in a couple of months and you know whatever if you want 30 days to to see how how this how much activity has happened in terms of re-sprouting with the eucalyptus see how booming they are even though we're off the rain season how the power of the eucalyptus to come back but really with the with the manpower and the areas that we're planting around here uh, it's not likely that I'm going to come back and manage this area again within this drought season. So this is really set up to go for the whole drought season. The materials in the ground is covering, it's protecting it. Let's go, you know. So yeah, some of these uh, passion fruits now I've got to 
be looking to flower i certainly hope so um you know as some of these heavier branches of eucalyptus came down we we heard a few banana trees uh some of these central taller ones some of them got knocked so we lost one or two of those we gotta go around now uh cutting off these dry leaves of these banana stems bananas don't like pruning so we're only taking the literally the, the the dried leaves the ones that have really face downwards vertically if they're yellow if they're slightly green if they've got any green on it bananas don't, don't like pruning so you know we don't want to hurt them they're like female mothers we really want to look after them see there where it's like yellowed we're still as long as there's green you know it's our choice to leave it there until they're proper vertical dry like that so we're going to be coming around now and taking these giving it a nice good clean now let's see if any of these papayas can be restored if any of them like you know uh we'll give them a second chance now they were shaded out let's see uh sometimes they suffer a little bit you know and it's it's not a big deal for me to produce smaller fruits because some of these papayas they actually produce such large fruit that it's quite difficult to sell out in the market no one wants like a three four kilo papaya so sometimes when these these papaya trees when they don't thrive so much and they give us you know 600 700 gram papayas we're better off so you know we're hoping that some of these will recover and still uh pay you know we've definitely already got our paycheck on that because the ones that have thrived the ones that have you know harvested and sold uh you know just in exchange for a few seeds of papayas or you know selection of the our best papaya trees like we're like we're on a fifth generation papaya uh culture here now um so it's definitely paid off already but i think I, we can get a little a little cash a little bit more cash on that and also a little bit more food for the animals and the birds uh, mainly because uh, these papayas uh, they're the main feed for the birds in the area so if you have any more doubts any questions about this setup this system is just an easy quick fix here uh, so we're going into the the drought season just easy quick fix just quick prune it had to happen now otherwise some of these leaves they would have dried off on the tree and we wouldn't have made good use of that on the soil so the resource we would have just basically lost this resource it would have just dried out Sometimes uh, beetles come in and they eat the leaves and then I'm going into the drought and the material that I had to cover the, the soil is just evaporated now. So this is a quick fix. Bananas, eucalyptus on the ground, ready for the drought, baby. So from the Agroforest Academy crew, give us your like, thumbs up, thumbs down, all right? The best way you can support us to keep us bringing you videos, if you like the channel, share the channel, comment on the channel, all right? Let's make it active and that will keep us... Uh, uh, working hard on this side for you. All right. So till next time, baby.